Hi, I'm Christina Camelli. I'm a free motion quilter and I love to get other quilters excited about free motion quilting too. Today the thing I want to get you excited to stitch is the wood grain pattern. This is a really popular quilting pattern. It's great for beginners and there's a few different approaches out there. Today I'll show you mine so that you can try it too. My personal preference is for a wood grain pattern that's less stylized and more organic. So here's kind of how I tend to stitch it. I tend to stitch it on neutral colored fabric so that it actually ends up showing off that texture, that barky texture, um, in a way that looks like it could almost be wood. So here I have this little wood grain zip bag that's from my book First Steps to Free Motion Quilting. I have this messenger bag. I get so many compliments on this when I take it out and about into the world. It's very touchable. And then I just made this quilt for my husband, which inspired this video. <laughs> and it kind of looks like a wood floor. So each of the boards is quilted individually with um, a slightly different pattern. You can see some of them have, have these knots in them and some of them don't or just have them, you know, really rarely. And they all kind of follow the same guidelines though. And so that's what I'm going to teach you today. So I think there's just four things you need to know to stitch this wood grain texture. Um, a wiggly wavy line, a wiggly wavy line that comes to a point, a wobbly spiral, kind of comes to the point in the middle and then you work your way back out, and a fork. So you go up, down, up again, down. The proportion that you use those different elements in the design will end up giving your design the character. You can do lots and lots of the wiggly lines. You'll see as I travel by the wiggly line next to it, I kind of respond to it. I might get closer to it in some places and farther away. I may, may add new bumps, but I definitely, they're not independent of one another. They each, each of them affects the other in some way. And so as you're all, you're always paying attention to what you did before and kind of building on it and then and new patterns will start to emerge. So here I've got this little indentation has developed and that seems like a really natural place when I stitch to go ahead and put in one of those spirals, even if it's just a tiny one. You'll always be faced with a challenge of filling in spaces that you come to, and you really should not overthink that. Um, when you, if you've left a space, you can leave it open, you can fill it in, and it really is probably going to look good either way. <laughs> It's really hard to screw up this pattern. I will say that over and over again, but just have fun with it. It's um, This is why it's so great for beginners is uh, bumps and irregularities are expected. So it can get you comfortable with moving the quilt under your machine without having to stress out about exactly where the thread ends up going. So here I'm going to start with a bumpy line. Sometimes I would stop and reposition my hands, but I think I can go a lot farther with an organic line like this without needing to stop and reposition, and that makes it a faster pattern to stitch for me. And I'm just going to come to a point and come back up. I'm going to kind of respond to that line where it bumps out, I might bump out. All the way back up to the top. I'm going to go over a little bit to the side and then come back down again. Again, exaggerating some of those bumps that have started to develop. Now this little indentation here seems like the perfect place for a spiral, so I'm going to put one of those in. Making sure it's a little wobbly, keeping that organic feel to it, hooking it back out. come back down. I'll take this all the way down to the edge of the piece. And over and back up. And you can see how I'll fill in that space. You can really do whatever you want. I'm just 
going to insert a point there, reposition and come back out of it, making the point a little fat to fill in that whole space. And now I see I left a space, I'm just going to hook and come back up to fill it. And then this time I'll just follow, fill in like that, follow the line. sort of glided over that, that little gap there. And I can feel myself going into an indentation again, so I'm going to go ahead and make another spiral. This one's long and skinny. hard to screw up the wood grain texture. It just It's supposed to have bumps in it, so if your free motion stitching is a little wobbly, it's a great thing to try as a new quilter. So we'll go some more. I'm going to do a fork here. A really long fork. the things that will help keep this wood grain texture looking really organic and unpremeditated is if you vary the point the space, spaces that you put your points at so you don't want to have a whole row of points coming together in one spot I'm sort of working against that rule right now to fill in this funny space that I left but I think it'll all turn out fine. So the spiral should fill in this space pretty nicely. grain texture. I hope that this video has shown you how um, easy it is and I hope that you give it a try.